people ahdan, a show is an accent for those without one. We've been hearing a lousy story all along. It's COVID really keeps us in uh, homes. Now we are out. Our social scale has really been tainted. We don't know what to do. And what got me out of COVID, or what got me out of, to the studio, this is the first live studio after COVID. That's a beautiful story that we heard about it and coming from the Women's Club uh, of Minneapolis. The beautiful story of, a, of an Egyptian who were there in Egypt, given a tour to a bunch of Americans like everybody else, and then they decided to invite her to America. Now she's here, she's visiting us for a few days, and we're gonna talk to Jimmy Burnett, he's a board member of the Women's Club, and he's gonna tell us how this story came about, and the story of Women's Club has been here since, you know, more than 100 years, and we have Sagi Shafi. She is uh, a tour guide and uh, maritime uh, archaeologist. She's the first graduate of that uh, speciality. Welcome to Balahdan, Jimmy. Thank you. Uh, welcome to Balahdan, Sagi. Thank you so much. Let's start with you first, Jimmy. And uh, I, I was telling you before, I've been talking to American for years, and nobody ever invited me to any free <laughs> dinners. And uh, you know that. The Americans are f f fascinated by dead Egyptians. They want to go see the mummy. And, but you brought out a, a live one. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time I see that Egyptian, uh, American interest in a live Egyptian, you know, a young live Egyptian. Now, this, that's wonderful. Tell us the background of that story. So first to tell you a little bit about the Women's Club. Okay. Uh, we were founded in 1907 by women here in Minneapolis that were really dedicated to the community, trying to help the community grow. We helped the school system get the pure drinking water in the early days. We helped with school nurses getting those in the school system. We helped with Red Cross during World War II. Ooh. I mean, we've done a lot of civic activities today. We're very focused on the area where the club sits on Lauren Park, and we've been doing a lot of community outreach. We help support the park. We support the Godfrey House. So we're very community focused. And as you can see, we're not all women. We have men too. So we really welcome everybody to our club. And um, just so happens that last year, there were five club members who decided to go on an Egypt trip. And we spent two weeks and our tour guide was Soggy. And we, had, we just fell in love with Egypt. And it's not the mummies, it's the history, it's the <laughs> culture, it's understanding how civilization started. Yeah. You know, so I was just fascinated and we said, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could bring that back and share that with our club members wow. and the community? So it took us a little while to get Sagi over here. We had to go through all the visa applications, and but she's here, and we're having our big <laughs> Egyptian dinner this Thursday at the Women's Club. Do you know what I like about this story? No mention of Dr. Hawass, because <laughs> he's, he's dominating the narrative for almost 50 years. But here we have somebody, other than Dr. Hawass, tell us about Egypt and talk about And I love that. Sagi, uh, we went through your name first, yes. because Sagi comes from, from Sag. Yeah, from Sagi Leilo, Sag which means the peaceful and quiet time after beautiful? sunset. Yeah. Did you know that? It's no, a rare name. I did. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very musical name. Yes. Yeah. Saga Leila, we have a, a famous okay. song, <laughs> beautiful song. But, but how did you get uh, interested in Egyptian uh, ancient history? Well, I love history uh, uh, since I was a kid. and um, We hated history. I just love it. Really? <laughs> yeah. And uh, I love traveling. So I love traveling around the world. Wow. And uh, I love uh, also like welcoming guests uh, coming from all over Here the world to Egypt. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. and always I feel that it's like my uh, my duty to tell whenever I'm traveling. Uh, duty. I, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's my honor as well to talk about my country, and always, always when I welcome guests, I see their eyes shining and want to hear more about our history. Really? Yes. Wonderful. So, so I love that. And uh, um, since I graduated, I uh, wanted to be in the guide department, uh, guide section, mm -hmm. to work as a guide. 
I'm not an office person. No. I, I love, like, yeah, to be around with yeah. the guests. Interesting. Yes, yes. That's wonderful because uh, we grow up, I don't want to be a, a negative, grow up, we hated history, even in ancient Egyptian it's history. Very it doesn't precious. make any sense. It is to very us. precious. So how did you get? connected to, to this too. Well, I was lucky. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes. Um, but you uh, work in a, a company. Yes, then. yes. Okay. And I was, it was my pleasure to be their guide. And um, as soon as I started talking with them, I mean, we kind of uh, I mingled with all the group and we became like more friends. <laughs> and uh, I got very attached to them. And as uh, Jimmy said, you stole our hearts. I oh, mean, wow. we became more or less like family, you know, really? after... Uh, and uh, because also uh, I used to live in uh, Minneapolis, so it felt for me like home, you know, like uh, yeah. as if uh, we know each other from a long time ago. So this is how it all started. <laughs> so uh, what's your connection in Minneapolis? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, it goes back to maybe 2002 mm. uh, when I first came here uh, with my son uh, and my daughter. Uh, my s I came for medical reasons. Uh, my son uh, um, uh, used to follow in Fairview University Medical Center. Mm -hmm. So I came in the beginning, uh, I thought it's going to be like a month or something like that. I stayed for a whole year. Oof. Yeah, it became my second home. Wow. And then between 2002 and 2010, I was like really uh, the care of all the doctors and the team uh, of doctors helped us a lot. Uh, so I've been traveling back and forth between uh, Minneapolis and uh, Egypt. And uh, I used to s uh, live in the Ronald McDonald House. Uh, oh, wow. which what, was a, what a service, isn't oh, it? Oh, amazing service. Amazing. Uh, yeah. I learned a lot from them. Uh, I learned to uh, give and volunteering what work. What a concept. Yes. Giving. giving. Giving your love, your care, even your smile and time. Uh, this is all what I learned from them. And I had... Till today, I have lots of good friends, and I'm actually <laughs> visiting the house tomorrow. Yeah, wow. it's my home away from home. It's wonderful uh, because yes. in Egyptian, Egyptian culture, everything. I mean, uh, we're such hospitable uh, uh, people. You know, people smile, invite you home. You take a, a cab. The driver wants to take you home because his wife making malochia. Yeah. Well, it's uh, Brangy Vacations, which is an LBGT. Uh, company based here in Minneapolis. Oh, I see. It is LBGT going to Egypt we did. and stolen their heart by an Egyptian. Yeah. This is getting even better. This so, is even get the story. So basically, she was with about 60 men, well, about 50 men and 10 women. Yes. Yep. That the size of the tour? Yeah, 60 people. But you said there's five people from the women's so club. So five of them, well, there were myself and four other women. From the women's club. Yep. What's the other people? They were from all over the country. Oh, I see. All over the world. So you John, it wasn't like this is just a women's club. No, no, too. wait, no, no. This, this is. We went and we flew into Cairo. This is random people coming that's from it. Iowa, from you got it. France, whatever. Right. That is beautiful. And you stole heart. Did you stole heart the American uh, tribe of this? Or well, well, how many hearts <laughs> did you steal? <laughs> all. <laughs> <laughs> this is really uh, so. The tour uh, they sp you spend the whole day with them, visiting yes. places, and yes. then in we the evening from, you go back. So no, we went from Cairo to we toured Cairo. We crawled through the pyramids. We went to Luxor, and she with you, and she was our guide the whole time. We split up in two groups, and she was had about twenty, thirty people yes. in yeah. one group, and the same in the other. We went to the Valley of the Kings. We, we cruised on the Nile, which was magnificent, by the way, yeah. uh, for five days. Uh, and then we ended up in Aswan and toured all down there. Interact with the Egyptian average person? We, the, the most fun was yeah, going, that's through, was going in Cairo through the bazaar. <laughs> that's you know, a bazaar. At night. <laughs> you know, and they're just people everywhere. San yeah. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Oh, yeah. yes. Even I scared the heck out of me. Well, wow. we did have a few, a few big guys that were <laughs> bodyguards. <laughs> Is that how it works? You have security usually uh, because it's of... It's just, it's not, yeah. not that we were scared. It's just Yeah, I understand, smart. but it's a protocol now. Right. So uh, that's even an issue now. I mm -hmm. mean, tourism hit hard. In the last 10 years of you since uh, the revolution, whatever, there is four presidents. Three, three revolution, one military 
a lot of things happen. Yes. So how does it affect uh, tourism? What we were affected for several years, yeah. you know, like uh, uh, since after the revolution, since like 2011, until maybe like four or five years after, yeah. we stayed at home. I, as a guy, I did not work. No work? Yeah, yeah. So how do yeah. you survive? Uh, I just survived. <laughs> but, you know, uh, some of my friends, most of my friends, they left their career. Yeah, they left. changed career, yeah. yeah. So, and then we started to get back again. And then we started. And then after that, we had the COVID. Last, let's say, year and a half after COVID, uh -huh. things are coming back. And everybody now is traveling. And mm -hmm. all the trips that were postponed were scheduled again. And people, as if they know that how precious it is to travel, so everybody's coming. That's beautiful. Yeah, and after having, for example, the museum was almost empty, you could wait for like half an hour in order to enter the museum. Really? Yes, yes. It's getting back. It's and getting. Uh, how about the, the new museum now? It's a big attraction. Yes. I, 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 in 2019, I drove by it. It wasn't yeah. really uh, finished. Yes. And this is the first time uh, they dri drive me from that area. And uh -huh. then I'm driving, I see the pyramids. Yes. From an angle I've never seen it before. So, so it's beautiful. I've visited there several times. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It takes your heart. <laughs> I was in tears it's when I was there. your heart again. <laughs> it takes your heart again. <laughs> so well, not only does she tell it, but she really brought it to life. There was one day we were at a tour, <laughs> and she made each one of us be a different character. Yes. Yes. As she, a, told the sto as she told the story, as she told the story, so we really kind of got into it. Okay, now you're dead. Oh no, really? you've been brought back yes. to life. You know, reenacting re re uh, yeah. history. Yeah, yeah. five thousand yeah. years or three thousand uh -huh. years of history. Right, the, that is beautiful. This is how I like to have my tours. It's not like s explaining things. Yeah, uh, read it's the story the behind, uh -huh. and in order to make my guests understand and enjoy more, so I get it back to life in the form of a play. Wow. Yeah. So uh, each one could act like who's uh, Horus, who's Isis, who's Osiris, and so on. So, well, what, 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 who was what was you? Correct? Actually, I was I was I was just a standby. That's <laughs> it. That's <laughs> it was okay. Oscar yes. winner, Oscar winner. Yeah, the, be <laughs> the best rule. Yeah, watch. exactly. I got to watch. watch. You, know? <laughs> you know, how do you tell uh, the story of three, four thousand years of history? There's so many things. Where do you start? And which you know, you need to make some priority and you need to play God, you know, this is what I'm going to do. Even two weeks is not enough. Yes. So how do you arrange that? I arrange it in a chronological order. Mm. Yes. Because uh, it's very important in order to enjoy your tour, to know the timeline, to understand this, then you uh, can differentiate between, uh, you know, different periods, because we have like different periods, and even we have in the Pharaonic period itself, like several uh, kingdoms, old, middle, and new. And there is like really a big gap in between, the, like, uh, like we're talking about thousands of years and yeah. 30 dynasties. Yeah. So you're talking about a long period of precious history. So uh, uh, once I uh, guarantee that my uh, guests understand this, then they would get into it. Into it. Really? Yes. And in the end of the tour and in the end of our whole, or their whole vacation, they are almost Egyptologists themselves. Oh my <laughs> God. They are mummies by the end of the tour. Well, it's, it's very interesting how your religion, your methodology, yeah. it gets mixed in with what really happened with like Seti the first, Ramsey the second. And you see all this mixed in and you go, wow. I mean, I, I truly believe Egyptians are the best storytellers, yeah. and I think the Romans and the Greeks stole they, from you they, guys. <laughs> they wrote it on the wall. Yeah. Uh, everything they did. Up. They wrote everything. Everything. Yeah. everything. You know, a few years before COVID, we have a French archaeologist, or the marine archaeologist, the, the one who uh, found uh, the two cities, the, uh, the two sunken cities, okay. in Alexandria, in your, in your home. Okay. Down. And uh, he was telling us, Bec they've been looking at those two cities. They've been missing for more than 2,000 years, but they haven't. It's, it's on the book. Jean-Yves Jean Empereur? Huh? Jean-Yves Empereur or somebody else? Well, not somebody else. Okay. Uh, his family, his father, they've been in marine archaeology for years. Okay. So he came here. They had, uh, they had those 5% of those discovered here uh, in the uh, uh, MIT. Sign. What he was telling me they've been looking for this for 2,000 years, that no, no place to be found. 
And of course, uh, the Egyptology, they always dig in the sand and try to find cities, missing yes. cities, like by the pyramids. And Dr. Hawass is always under Kevin. He's telling us he's a cowboy hero, <laughs> and he found out everything. <laughs> Nobody else, did, uh, people dug the whole thing, but he found out everything. <laughs> they couldn't find this two city. His thinking was, if he cannot find it for 2,000 years in the sand, it's going to be under the water. Exactly. And that's how he, and it took him about 20 years. And he found it. Uh, uh, well, um, to continue what you are saying, uh, we have treasures not only under land, but under seawater as well. Yeah, yeah. So this That's is what he found them. Yeah. In Alexandria, and, uh, yeah? Abu yep. Kir, whatever? Uh, Abu Kir, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, Abu Kir and uh, in the uh, eastern port and uh, the north coast uh, uh, in uh, Egypt. Um, and uh, also what I want to tell you is that uh, you're talking about the Greeks and the Romans, yeah. the civilization. They were themselves obsessed by the pharaonic civilization. They wanted to imitate them. They wanted to be close to the people. Even Alexander the Great himself, he was dressed like a yeah. pharaoh. Well, you brought this up, and I was not going to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> Why some Egyptian I pissed off at a black Cleopatra? Oh, It's yeah. a huge issue. And you have this clown, uh, Basim, whatever, and yes. then uh, now Hawass is jumping on it, making yeah. his own version. Why? What's so big deal that uh, that she is have a darker skin? Because simply she is of a Greek origin. Yeah, but the Greek has Plutonic. They have uh, people from Persia. They have uh, darker skin. They are uh, part of darker skin. Besides, she's not Egyptian. Well, you can say she's Egyptian. For me, I say that, well, uh, she is the uh, uh, the last queen of the Ptolemy's family. Yeah. So the, the they Ptolemy come from uh, Greece. Yes, uh, Alexander the Great himself, yeah. and then he was followed by Ptolemy the yeah. first, and then it's a family of thirteen, ending by Cleopatra. You're talking about thirty B.C. So the origin ex uh, is like more Mediterranean. I see. Uh, uh, you know, so even if it's <laughs> like Greece or it's Egypt, so still this Mediterranean features. I still have an issue there. Why, d why didn't they get pissed off when Elizabeth Taylor played Cleopatra? Ah. She has the same <laughs> right to play Cleopatra <laughs> African American as Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> but the, the, the idea of race and dark, this is modern things. It's not mm. At this time, that was no big deal. Mm -hmm. it was what did we get out of this? What did you get out of this trip that you told your family, whatever? Well, I mean, I just have a... I have a completely different opinion of really? Egypt. What did you uh, have? Well, I was kind of scared of Cairo, but I, I actually I love it. We're we're working on a chaotic uh, <laughs> logic. There is a chaos. There is, a, but there is a logic there. There is a logic there, and again, you know, she, she made me think. I, I was very disappointed when we kept saying, "Why are all these symbols been raced off the temple?" And it was the Romans and the Greeks because oh, yeah. they were scared the Egyptians go back to worshiping their Egyptian gods. And like, <laughs> wow, they destroyed all this beautiful culture yeah. because they were all scared. Yeah, isn't that fear is amazing, uh, amazing, destructive uh, emotion, right. human emotion? Right. Sagi, yeah. you've done, <laughs> you've done to, uh, so much for Egypt in two weeks. Then probably. My own. 70 years of uh, rolling of whatever. I do it Isn't all it? my life. Really? <laughs> yes. Wonderful. Yes. Well, this is a, a great story. Sagi Sha uh, Shafi, um, Shafi is a, a tour guide that impressed and stole the heart of a bunch of Americans, and they brought her here. This is a, a great story. Uh, Jimmy uh, Burnett is really a board director, of m a member of uh, the women's uh, club here in Minneapolis, and uh, you guys are having a dinner and a, and a talk on Thursday evening. It's a sold out, so I'm not promoting this. Right. You know, just stay home <laughs> <laughs> and feel sorry about yourself. <laughs> and uh, we well, thank you so much thank for coming here, so Jimmy. Thanks thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great Pleasure. story. Yeah. Here is uh, a, a good story for Shane's, and we'll conclude our show. We'll see you next week. Assalamu alaikum, and God bless you all.